Thank you so much for having me for this talk. So my talk is called The Timing of Diverse Character Placement. And yes, that is my me, which I spent an incredible amount of hours trying to create. <laughs> so the first question is, have you ever stopped playing a game early? Like before it was done, right? There, there's a lot of, of ways that, that that can happen. Normally, it's because you're not immersed in the game. That can be, it can be boring. It can be broken. Anybody that has Arkham Knight on PC like I do knows about broken games. Um, it can be intimidating. Um, as much as I love these games like Dragon Age and The Witcher 3, when I play them for six hours and I, and I don't see progression, I get intimidated and I stop playing them. Or there's some games that are just not your taste, right? You know, it can be a great game, but, but just doesn't fit in your wheelhouse. Um, and one thing that I want to propose here is the timing of diverse character placement can also affect immersion and, you know, really disengage you from a game. So I want to define what I mean by timing of diverse character placement. Who is being marketed and who is being marketed to? So even before the game is out, who do you see in the commercials, in the magazines, all that stuff? When do diverse characters show up in the game? Are they at the beginning? Are they all throughout the game? Are they in the credits, which trust me, I've seen? Um, and how nuanced are they, right? Are they well-written characters? Do they actually have motivations and s stories and don't just exist to um, prop up um, another character? And the more emotion I, I put into it, the harder I rock, which is a great quote by O.C.'s song, Time's Up, which I thought was great for this, um, because you really have to put you know, all, all into these characters so that they can rock, or else they just feel like they are just kind of boilerplate characters. So I love the game Splatoon on the Wii U. Awesome game, um, great multiplayer game. But I remember being really bothered before the game came out. Um, I was like, who is being marketed to and who is in the marketing? Now, for those of you not familiar w with the game, it's a multiplayer shooter where you're shooting paint um, and you, you, you are basically a kid that turns into a squid. And there's a really annoying song that I'm not going to sing that has to do with that. Um, but I noticed that the game, um, all of the kids featured in the marketing are white. Um, except when you get to this screen here, which is the character acceleration screen um, on the website, because it's kind of like blackness is kind of treated as this accessory, like, yeah, um, you can get a new hat and new shoes, and you can be black, it's great. Um, and I also noticed that the amiibos that are offered, um, and I collect a lot of amiibos, you know, are all of the white characters. So even though it, in a game where you know, it's like all about being different and they do have skin tone kind of selections and all that in the actual game. When you look at the marketing, that's what it is, right? So, so that can immediately disengage a person from even trying out a game. Um, in the game Battlefield Hardline, when do diverse characters show up, right? Um, so, so I'm going to play a, a, a little bit of, of a video and we'll talk about it. Actually, let me see why that's not playing. Stranger? Okay. I know, I know. It's just, um, I'm going to put you cool. Sorry, man. I want on my duty. Okay, okay. All right, well, officer, you, you, you uh, take care of the neighborhood. Be safe. All right? Damn. You stuff something in those pants, officer? Thomas, don't make me check your pockets, because I know what I'll find. I sure do. Ruben, put a leash on this guy and well, get that in a bag. I, I, I don't, I don't really have a <laughs> I don't have a bag. All right, so these scenes are right at the beginning of Battlefield Hardline, um, where they're setting up the narrative, the uh, narrative that you're a police officer and you're going through this like rough neighborhood and you always have to watch your back and like that kind of stuff. And even though the lead characters are both Cuban and uh, Korean, so you definitely have a um, diverse set there, 
when you look at the color in the game, all of the um, you know darker skin characters are are usually at the beginning either drunk or homeless or trying to kill you, right? And this is all within like maybe the first 10 minutes of the game and I had to put it down um, because I was really just like, is this how this game is like gonna be? Um, and that's something that I think appears in a lot of uh, games. Okay, so in, whoops. Okay, so in Watch Dogs, which takes place in the city, uh, kind of in a weird version of the city that doesn't, isn't really representative of Chicago, um, how nuanced are these characters when they show up? Now, you have a video game that takes place in a very diverse city, as we all know, um, but the African-American characters that show up in the game still appear to be like uh, this guy, assaulted roommate, unemployed with a gun in the projects, right? Um, most of the black characters in this game are like a relegated to one specific area of this um, version of uh, Chicago. Um, and it really doesn't, you know, pay um, homage and respect to the diverse setting that it's put in. And that's also something that disengages a uh, player from that game as well. Now, Getting the timing right doesn't always mean that you're perfect. Um, as I said before, Splatoon allows you to like uh, select both your gender and your skin color right at the beginning, right? But um, as was pointed out to me, obviously there's a binary gender s selection there, right? So like, uh, so like, th so like th that's something where if you don't identify as like either of those genders, that can be, you know. Um, disengaging and the skin tone, the default is always white on everything. So you still feel like you're changing what the default is to fit somebody like me, right? And uh, that's a problem with a lot of character creators in these games is that, you know, you have to kind of alter what you see in the marketing, in the magazines, just to get someone that looks like me. Um, so. It doesn't mean that you're perfect, but it's still important to um, take that step. And also, getting the timing wrong isn't a death sentence. Um, so it doesn't mean that your game is uh, completely horrible. And I I'm gonna play a scene from uh, Game of Thrones, uh, the uh, Telltale game. So let's check that out and hope it plays. Pretty sure he hates you, actually. No. He'll help us. I'll make sure of it. Okay, so I, I know it might have been a little hard to see with the lighting here, but in Game of Thrones, right, so for anyone that's um, familiar with the story, this takes place in Marine, um, which is a, a area in the story that has a lot of people of color in it. So when I got to this part of the game, which is like episode four, I was like, wow, I'm finally going to see black people in this game. And in this, <laughs> in this scene, all the black people are, are sort of hidden behind doors. They kind of walk away. So you don't really get to see any, let alone have them be a nuanced character. Um, so the timing here is like a is like really bad. And the fact that, you know, even, even though this was in the Game of Thrones, universe, which like people would argue is a white universe, and why would you have black people in uh, Westeros? Um, this is a game, and they made up a whole bunch of other characters that aren't in the books, right? So there was no real reason for them to limit them to um, being uh, white. All right, but it can definitely make your game look silly. Guy at the motel. Hey, there's one over by the motel. There's one by the gas station. Move, and I shoot! Hostile uh, suspect down! Hey! Medicaid, motherfucker! Stop the transport driver, motherfucker! Now fuck him up, fool! Yo, light those motherfuckers up! Oh shit, chopper! Got one at the motel! Got one over to the motel! Got one at the motel! Hey, bitch! Over at the motel! 
So as you can see, two distinct voices there. You have the cops that sound like, you know, your standard kind of military guys, and the criminals who are just, just sound like, you know, just out of pocket, basically, right? Everything is a curse word, um, and the certain dialect that, like, you have is very scripted to, like, being a person of... Uh, color and I thought that that made this game you know seem ex seem extremely silly um, in the uh, multiplayer portion um, because you know it's 2015 and all characters should you know have varying voices like you shouldn't be able to like immediately tell who's like good or bad by the voices that are uh, chosen in in the game especially when they're racially coded the way that they are here okay Timing also matters in games that you wouldn't expect them to, meaning games where you don't always see your character at all times. So the game here, Prism Shell by Brooklyn Gamery, is a over-the-top shooter where you don't see your character in the game at, at all. But the marketing and the page, as soon as you see it, they let you know that this hero is a black woman, right? And even though you don't see your character in the game, um, that's like a very powerful statement on the marketing and it can attract people to that game that might not check it out, right? So like that timing of it being on the marketing um, really can bring people into the game. And on the right side, my current obsession, which is Destiny on the PS4, um, they have female characters and the armor is actually done in in a such a way where it's not trying to be like sexified or that kind of stuff that you normally see in in these kind of like games when the women have armor and it doesn't look like it can actually protect them in a battle. So these are all different podcasts that focus on video games that um, I feel like su support that message of uh, diversity. So there's a Spawn on Me podcast, DLC, Black Girl Nerds, Less Than or Equal, Isometric, Fresh Out of Tokens, Unconsolable, Justice Points, Game Enthuse, and Gamer Tag Radio. These are these are all shows that don't even that that not only have diverse hosts but aren't afraid to talk about these issues um, on their shows. And if you want to follow my work, um, I tweet at Sharif Jackson and also at Gaming Looks Good. Um, and Gaming Looks Good is also the name of my YouTube series um, where, where I talk about games from the lens of uh, race, gender, and sexuality. So that's my talk. Any questions? Um, so the question was if I've had anyone reach out to me um, about the, uh, the YouTube series. Um, yes, actually. Um, everyone from casual fans to um, I had some people at Electronic Arts kind of reach out to me. Um, and and uh, some people from um, Ubisoft because I did a series on Assassin's Creed and uh, some of the racial issues in uh, that as well. Because they are paying attention to this stuff, um, but a lot of times these are extremely large companies. They don't necessarily prioritize kind of diversity, um, and they kind of leave it till the last minute during the game dev crunch. And like they're like, "Oh no, we need some women and 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 stuff in this game." And it shows because the people that are in the game are not nuanced. So, yeah. So, so the uh, question is that um, the uh, issues with Splatoon are kind of indicative of of a lot of the patriarchal culture inside of like Japan and like how, how, how do we change this ourselves, right? With games, got to speak with your dollar. If there's something that you really do not like, you know, don't buy the game and let these companies know because they are reading Twitter, they are reading Facebook. Um, and if things are not like successful or get a bad PR spin, you know, people will change because I do agree that like a lot of it does come from uh, certain things in Japan, but there's also Nintendo of America that chooses what games come out here, right? Like every game in Japan doesn't always come here. So like, uh, so like there is a, a, like American branch of the company that like looks at games for sensitivity issues and it, it like used to be much um, worse in the 80s where like they, they would take out anything that had any kind of like like religious sign or like anything like that. So 
they do have that oversight, and if we speak with our money, I think it will affect that. Um, so the question is, um, is a randomized like selection of race and gender on the character creator for a Splatoon, is that like sufficient, or like sh should they really actually try to make it a person of color as the default? Um, I personally like the randomized I, 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 idea, um, because I think that the main issue is that default. Like in, in so much media, books, games, it's like always like if you don't say anything, that person's white. If you say th that there's something else, Th th then they're not white. And that's something that can really have a subconscious effect as you're growing up as like a kid, whether you're white or, or like Latino or like black, um, you get these things in your, in your head about what is normal, about what, what a normal person does. Um, and I think that with the, ram, with the ran, randomization, it can like help to like I say, okay, I can be anybody, you know, anybody can be a hero. Right, as like opposed to, th so this is the default hero, and I have to make extra effort to adapt that to be not the default. Um, just to um, share some thoughts on the question of a random assignment of colors of characters in games versus an intentional assignment. Um, I think an argument for an intentional assignment would be the ability to give the character a backstory and give the character context and life experiences related to um, their identity as a person of whatever heritage that you're assigning them that you wouldn't be able to if it was a random assignment. And I think that's important and significant. Yeah, I think that that's, that's like a great point. And I think that that definitely has impact on games with a more narrative st structure on them, right? Like when I played the Mass Effect trilogy, um, I played as a uh, black woman through all three games, right? Now, all the marketing for like Mass Effect was, you know, was like st standard white male bro out to save like the galaxy right and there's nothing wrong i mean mass effect is a great game but i was like how much cooler would this be if 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 they made this about a person of like color they added parts in the story in the backstory that specifically called that out um you know that would be powerful stuff but i guarantee you that they had meetings that said that's not going to sell, you know, um, that they're using a lot of statistics that are, in my opinion, outdated as to who a gamer is, what percentage of, like, people play games, what communities are uh, buying games, um, and they tend to, ta to tailor their uh, marketing and their games toward that. Any other questions? Mom, you a, yeah, a question in the back, Mom? No, okay. All right, well, thank you very much.